Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Maki -E Vlog. Today we're at the Chicago Auto Show, and we're going to do something we do at all auto shows. We're going to hunt down every EV that we can find. So let's go. Kicking it off, of course, at the Ford booth, I'm standing in front of the 2024 GT now in eruption green. So cool we get to see this here in person, but this is not the only beautiful Mach-E that we have here. I'm also standing right next to the rally in glacier gray, slow pan over there with the rally wheels. Um, and what is behind there? Shall we stroll over? Yeah, we'll just go check out. It's We're first thing in the morning and we just busted in here and they're still setting stuff up and everything. As you can see, there's no one here but we get to just stroll around and have our pick. Wow, that looks so beautiful. So there is a uh, F-150 Lightning Platinum Black. There's only, they're only gonna make 2,000 of these. Um, it's just, it's, it's wrapped in like a satin finish. Uh, so it's really nice looking. It has a couple other little details. Like it's basically just like a completely blacked out Lightning. Um, here's like another Mach-E. We, we actually have a Ford booth tour if you want specifically more info on all the Ford stuff, but we're just gonna quickly hit what is in Ford and then uh, move on and hit all the manufacturers. Let's go. I'm standing right in front of their whole Bronco setup. Once the whole event starts, this can be really noisy with Broncos bouncing around everywhere and people having the best time. But right behind that is an e-transit. Super cool to see it over there. We get up close in our Ford booth tour, but now let's go check out something else. So we have a couple of videos on this. One on the Out of Spec uh, Reviews channel. If you look up F-150 Lightning switch gear, uh, and we also talked to one of the engineers that created this. This is a one-off created by Ford Performance. It is a off-road version of the Lightning, just to be like an e-demonstrator, show you what's capable, but really cool to see this here. And with the mud that they had on it, this is from King of Hammers. They uh, went out and took it out there and, and had a lot of fun with it. Look at the handle. I like this part right there. Oh, like, gross. <laughs> it's really caked on. So. <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. There's a lot of EVs here uh, at the Chicago Auto Show. Woohoo! Well, we thought it would be snowing in Chicago when we arrived. It's not, but it is showing in snowing inside the Auto Show. <laughs> this, this is, is my kind the, of snow. Uh, <laughs> Nissan Aria pole to pole electric vehicle expedition uh, display. You should check this out if you don't know anything about it. Google pole to pole Nissan Aria. Uh, the couple that were actually doing this were here uh, earlier at the They auto might show. still be here, so we might track them down. Uh, Julie and Chris Ramsey, they spent 10 months trekking this around the world. This is obviously an OG Nissan Aria that has been tweaked in many ways. It looks amazing and it is a uh, a lot more capable of a round the world trip for sure. Really cool to see this here. Hold the pole. We're going to just go over here. There's uh, sound over there, so we won't get too close. But Nissan Leaf, still going strong. It still has Chatamo. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar to our channel, we actually have a 2012 Nissan Leaf that we're borrowing from Kyle Connor with out of spec, with is still about 50 miles of range on it, even though it's a 2012. Um, so. Let's see. Let's go find a regular Aria. Though. Yeah, let's. I think this looks amazing. I would absolutely love it. I've and always loved I this like color. No, it's a great color. It's kind of like goldy bronze. And here we have a regular. <laughs> I just love the snow falling. Like, isn't that fun? Snow falling on the regular Aria too. Snow falling on the regular Aria. Uh, and this nice gray here. Uh, why is it like the bridge? Oh, I thought the bridge was like in white letters, but it's just the reflection. But uh, let's take a look inside real quick. We've seen this for a couple of years now. We've seen a few out in the wild with some uh, people. Look at the like micro suede on the dash. That looks really nice. I haven't seen that before. or Maybe I have and just forgot about it. Um, there are a bunch of cool features inside. Some really beautiful textiles in the um, the buttons hidden in the wood, if you can see that on the, the center console. Yeah. Oh, I think and, that looks awesome. And that's also on the dash as well. Um, this is, you know, this is one of the things about the Aria is that uh, a lot of people are like, it's just like the new version of the Leaf. It's not. Uh, the feel inside, I believe they went with a more premium feel. It rides really nice. 
charges way better than the Leaf. And of course it has uh, CCS uh, right now. I believe they've also like pretty much everybody's switching to Max or NACS. So that's going to be an advantage. I don't know when they're doing it or if they have actually announced. I think everybody's announced uh, by now. But anyways, uh, it's don't think of it as like the new version of the Leaf. This is a completely different platform, way better uh, materials, textiles inside, just has a completely different feel. We really like it. If you're a Nissan fan, like we know some people that are Nissan brand loyalists, uh, loyalists and they love this thing. So, uh, and the, the Namely pricing, my mom, we wish that she would get into I know. this. Her mom she, would be a perfect candidate. She would be great. Uh, pricing again, I believe it's like in that you know, 50 to 60 range with some you know, maybe in the 40s, I forget. Uh, because I just don't see a lot of the uh, information in covering these uh, anymore, there was a lot of attention when it first came out, but not so much now. But it is still a great choice if you're a Nissan fan. So now we're in Toyota. All they have right now, of course, is the BZ4X. Um, we've driven the twin, the Solterra from Subaru. I haven't seen it in red before, but the red and the black actually sort of plays off very nicely, especially with the as shiny as the red is with the shiny black. I, I'm, I don't know. Other times that I've seen this, I have not really liked a lot of the color combos, but the red and black looks pretty sharp. Um, of course, you know, we aren't as much of a fan of this one because the range isn't super high. Uh, it's around 200 miles and the charging isn't that great. Um, they, they actually have some weird stuff where you can't DC fast charge it, but a certain number of times per day. So, or, or within a 24 hour period. So interesting setup on this, but otherwise like it drives well and uh, we, we, we enjoyed our time in the Solterra. So I bet yeah. we can find one of those here at some point. And by the way, this is a pretty good red, but we did see what I think is one of our favorite reds. But it's it was not an EV. EV. Mazda right. red. It's a Mazda red, so maybe if we see it again, we'll throw it in to this video as a little Easter egg. And you have to tell us what your favorite red on a vehicle is, because it's weird how different they can be. All right, onwards. We'll start in Hyundai with the Kona. Uh, this one, it says, is priced at uh, 42000 $905. Uh, I believe it's a electric limited uh, driving range of about 261 miles. You know, a lot of people don't really, you know, think about this uh, car, like when they're looking at all the EVs, but um, this appeals to a lot of people. It looks fairly normal inside, drives fairly normal. Um, I we think, haven't driven it though, have we? Uh, we did, no, we drove the Kia, uh, Nero. So Nero. it's very, very similar to it. I actually, I don't know why, but I'm really liking it in this color. The the trim features, the sort of aluminum brush and then the black cladding. Um, and they've updated it looks really good. the look for 2024. So that line, yeah, the, the, the light line. bar and some of the pixelated uh, stuff that you'll see when we get it. It's very Hyundai. Yeah, it and uh, it's up feeling here, cohesive. The lights going across the front, the light bar. And again, the little pixels that we'll see. And look at that on the bottom grill as well. Yeah. Echoed the whole statement. And then of course, uh, the Ionic 5, this thing has won so many awards. Um, and compared to the uh, Kona, this charges so much faster. This is a great road trip car if you're looking for something like that. This is, I thought it was gray as we were walking over to it, but I it's think it's- It's sort a, of greenish? It's a green, yeah. It's uh, a gray green. But you'll see- know you know, in the headlights here, a lot of that pixel um, stuff that's, you know, going on in the Kona. There you go. There's like one of the, the car awards. Best electric vehicle winner 2024 uh, from cars.com. And it says this one is priced as uh, shown 58,985. So comparing it to the, the Kona, it's a bit more. And I don't know what you think, but I think like the Kona dash is actually really nice. Considering yeah. if we're looking at the Hyundai, the more expensive, the sort of new, more souped up version, the Kona Dash is actually not shabby at all. The Kona is not bad. This is sort of, you know, going toward, uh, you know, this one of course is complete uh, EV design. So like there's no center console hump um, that you have to worry about. So it's, you know, it's uh, depending on what your, your take is. It is, you know, ends up being a bit more expensive. I was looking for this one. <laughs> Where is it at? And then the Ionic 6, the sedan, uh, I feel like it's a sedan version of the Ionic 5. 
I always think of it as the two different it, versions. They're so different looking to me. They're so different, but um, I don't know why I like this so much. I'm not normally a sedan person. You guys will have to vote uh, five or six. Which one do you like best? But obviously we have those little uh, pixel uh, embellishments. <laughs> and, and up here too. It's like there are a bunch of really subtle little things like that. Um, which now starting to see it evolve and the whole brand is actually really, it's really fun and it's really recognizable. Uh, we need to drive this. I just think it do. looks so good. There this, is a really quite a big uh, tunnel in the, the cabin. In the cabin? Yeah. It, so we'll have to see how comfortable it feels, but. And it's, it's just empty space under there, but um, yeah, it does take up quite a bit. And this one is uh, as spec 55. Uh, thousand uh, range. Now, here's what's sort of cool is uh, 305, well, base is 240, 305 for a couple of them, and then 361 is their long range bottle, that's which insane. is pretty darn impressive. Yeah, for uh, 42,000, that's really good yeah. and super fast charging. So, very nice. And they have a little test track behind us. They have an Ionic 5 and an Ionic 6. Uh, uh, just rolling around Anaconda. at some point. <laughs> Anaconda? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. That's it here. Uh, I believe next up we'll hit Chevy. So here's the 2024 Equinox EV. We've been excited and anticipating this one for a while, and it's been like on the show floor. It might be the same one that we've seen at like LA and Detroit. Um, we're really hoping that we'll get some more details. We can reserve it and all that good stuff. It's supposed to have up to like 319 miles of range. Um, at first people were saying this is gonna replace the Bolt because they discontinued the Bolt, but now they're talking about bringing the Bolt back. So I don't know where that will fall in line, but uh, hopefully we'll get some more details. I mean, it's 2024, we should have some stuff pretty soon on this, but we do actually have some other uh, EVs over here in the Chevy area, including the Blazer, which is on sale, but there's a stop sale, but don't let that worry you uh, because it's just some software glitches. They're, they're gonna work on it. They're gonna get that resolved. Um, a lot of people consider this a competitor to the Mach-E that we have, uh, 324 uh, miles of range. It's sort of in that same uh, uh, price range as the Mach-E. Uh, a lot of people also compare it to the Cadillac Lyric because it's basically the same car. and. Oddly enough, the Cadillac Lyric is often cheaper, like on an equivalent trim level. But uh, camera person, Liv, take a look inside. This, this is very interesting. This is a I very bold this. look. Is it old? Bold. A oh, bold. No, it's, old. <laughs> it's very bold. It's only very bold. bold look. Um, what do you think? The red and black, I, you know, it's like, a, I think I might like it. But if you're the type that keeps your car for 10 years, not that I'm worried about it, like, um, wearing out but like would, would you get tired of this look if you keep your car for a long time and, and of course this is because it's an rs trim level so ah, and let's look at that in the rear it actually interestingly looks quite nice with the seat belts uh because that's red you oh, know the yeah. button so yeah, it, it yeah. sort of blends in quite nicely i wonder uh how this would be with resale uh, if it makes it harder or if it's just I, like the exterior of a vehicle it's hard to know i mean i think more people are going to be worried just you know general uh EV resale value, keeping with the tradition, like the mach -E, very tiny <laughs> rear window uh, wiper. They also have a uh, Silverado. Now this one isn't on sale yet. This is like the consumer version, but they are uh, starting to sell the Silverado work trucks. And in fact, we'll go over to the test track where Chevy and some other manufacturers are at, and you can get a ride in one of those here. Um, a lot of people, of course, can consider this like a, a very direct rival with the F-150 Lightning. Similarly priced, this is a bit more expensive, but it also has a uh, bigger battery, a lot faster charging. So uh, like I know Kyle Connor is like, is this his next truck? So he's he's very excited by this. Um, but yeah, it, I think two, 277 uh, peak charging speed, which is fantastic. Um, and the big battery, I think uh, you can get over 200 kilowatt uh, our battery on this. I'm not sure. I'll have to double check that. And it's and, nice to have a different aesthetic option. Like it, it really has a different look to the Lightning. Nice pass through. And it has some, yeah, interesting features like the pass through, um, the uh, rear tailgate 
uh, folds down. I'm hoping um, that the Lightning adapts the uh, regular F-150 tailgate where it has like a like oh, the a hit, door. A gate on it, basically. Yeah, that was really nice. And we're, we're trying not to show like duplicates of, of cars. Um, so I don't want to show two Silverados, but I do want to look at this one because this is a black Silverado. Is this one of the work trucks? No, it's an RST. I, I don't know my Silverados yet, but it's neat seeing it in black. And we might as well continue on. I'm going to grab the camera because I'm going to let Liv talk about this oh. next one. We're going to jump I right. wish that this was electric. This looks like a tangerine OG VW bus. It's not a conversion. No, it's a 1967 21 window bus. Shout out to the EVLC because that, they do have a conversion VW bus from the 70s, I think. Yeah, it's, um, it's from the 70s, I believe theirs. And we it was in one of our recent videos. Um, we'll put a link down below probably if we yeah. remember. Yeah, uh, but let's go look at some fun electric stuff. Like, of course, the ID Buzz, uh, which everyone has gathered around. And it's in this beautiful two-tone um, blue and white trim. I think in the US, it's always going to be two-tone, right? And in the right. European model, you could get um, one color. You can get I the mono color, and you can also get um, uh, like a cargo van version. Oh yeah, so this is the longer wheelbase made available just for the US. It looks really, really cute in this color. There's also a mint color that I think might be my favorite. Mint but green on the bottom yeah. and white. So. Yeah, but this is actually really good. And then of course, I really like how they're putting it next to the OG uh, Beatles, the design yeah. inspiration. Um, but that is not the only sweet EV here at VW. So let's slow pan over. Um, the ID4, which has been around for a few years, but um, I forget. I just saw a thing pop up in my newsfeed this morning. It won like a like a Reader's Choice Award for favorite car, uh, favorite EV for 2024. Um, and I think it's it's one of those where it doesn't get like a, a lot of attention, like the the Mach E and the Model Y. A lot of people are like doing comparisons. They sort of forget about the uh, ID4. But I this don't is just, know why. It's a great EV. Um, Price similarly to the Mach E, a little bit cheaper, and but just just good value. And of course, it comes with the three years free Electrify America charging. Um, we've had numerous conversations on social media about how people feel about free charging. So leave your thoughts down below kindly, but let's have a conversation as well. I, yeah, I started one last <laughs> night on threads and Twitter, uh, and I, I did a poll on each of those. Oh, uh, did you? Oh, I'll put perfect. the results in the description. You're giving yourself a lot of work. Lot of You're definitely that editing this video. Or editing, but what do you uh, guys think about the ID4? Like, are you, are you a fan? Is it like too dull for you? I mean, I think we need to drive this. Like, we haven't driven in years now, and uh, this is a really like sweet driver-focused cabin, uh, but expansive, a petite vehicle. It's what's not to like. And the software has um, improved a lot, apparently um in since 2021 and hopefully getting better and better they they uh i think they just announced they now actually have uh plug-in charge capability which was surprising that they didn't because the the relationship of vw and electrify america but it's really cool to to see that uh, they finally have that as well on Electrify America. And uh, I, I was trying to say the pricing is comparable to the Mach-E, like it, they don't have like a GT version of this, so it doesn't go up as much. Uh, but I think like in the mid 40,000 range, and uh, speaking of range, I think the range is, is up there like similar to the Mach-E as well. What do we think of the black? I, the black? I don't know. I mean, I, I do think like it looks quite one. sharp. Yes, the blue, the they gray looks pretty here. good. Um, <laughs> But let's see what else there is. We realized later that we had completely forgotten about the VW ID7, so here it is. Fortunately, we realized in time and we were attending the charity gala thanks to an invite from Nissan. So here is the VW ID7. This is their sedan that will be coming to the US in the second half of 2024. As per usual, one of the amazing things about EVs is that you can have an indoor test track because there's no fumes or anything like that. So we have the Silverado available. We're starting with the How Silverados cool available. They have a blazer on display, but that is not part of the test track. Just for show. I don't think they're allowed to because there's a stop sale on it. Um, is that a space white Maki? Space white Maki over there. Really nice. Grab, and grab a blue. blue, grab an attention. Um, and we didn't go over the specs of the Mach-E. I figured a lot of our viewers uh, know the specs, but uh, this is a premium 
and uh, you know the the selects start in the like low 40s, like 42, uh, 43,000, and then it goes all the way up to like the GT. And for 2024 uh, Maquis, they uh, are dropping the GT Performance Edition, but rolling some of that uh, Performance Edition stuff down to the GT. And I believe that's right at 60,000. So. And then of course they'll have like people here working and and getting everyone set on rides, but we are literally uh, really early. <laughs> Yep. Oh, yeah, no worries. See, they're, they're setting stuff up. Setting up stuff EVs. for today. <laughs> um, of course, they have Lightnings here um, from Ford. And then next up Always is Kia. Fun. I was wondering where Kia is at. I didn't see that. I, I think they're on the other side, and we'll go around there. It's a small show, but it's really densely packed with cool stuff. So um, we have an EV6. Which we are big fans of the EV6. Uh, EV6 GT, we did a, a review of that. Um, the range is a little bit low, like 206 miles of range, but it's just such a fun car. Um, and again, similarly priced with the like Mach-E and then Liv. <laughs> <laughs> we have an EV9, which has to come with an apology. We went with my dad to the Kia dealership and he bought a Sportage a hybrid and they had ribbons and I could not resist popping a ribbon onto an EV9 just because I think it's amazing. Patrick posted that, everyone thought we bought it. I, said, I wish. All I, I wish. did is I said, I posted that photo, I said, Liv did a thing. Which is deceptive, it's just it's so <laughs> but naughty. But then I followed it up, I was like, yeah, she did a thing, she took a photo with the EV9. I'm but so But everybody's sorry. like, congratulations, so we apologize. EV9 we is great. It's an amazing vehicle and we got to see multiple families getting in and out of it at the dealership. Like this was in demand, people were, there were at least, what, four families in yeah. the time that we were there? Oh, yeah. And uh, the, if you don't know, um, it's one of the very few three-row uh, SUVs that's uh, electric SUVs. Um, of course, it can, you could sort of say like the Model X is one as well. Um, that costs uh, quite a bit more. Um, the Model Y is technically could be a three-row, but that's a, a very small three-row. This is a very big three-row. Yeah, I think this is too was much so far. Maybe maybe <laughs> at the Kia booth. Um, so yeah, we we want to do a video on the EV9, and it's uh, like has a lot of uh, variation and options for different trim levels, um, decent range, has the the EGIMP platform, so it charges really fast. And we got to at least sit in one recently, and it's it seems really yeah. lovely. So we I like, do need to I drive. like the blue one that's back there. The blue looks great, and we did see that at the dealership. But other people loved it too. <laughs> So now we're going to move on. Uh, we're at Cadillac, and they're doing test rides in the Lyric, which again, it's uh, very similar to the Blazer. Really like some of the front lighting accents on this one. And it's uh, fairly well priced as well. Um, again, sort of like in with the uh, line with like, you know, the Maki is the one that we always compare it to. But we uh, got to do a tour of this. This is the 2025 Escalade IQ. It's going to have like up to 450 miles of range. We, we did uh, like a video on this one, so that may be out or soon to come out. But the, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, th this one has uh, like a over 200 kilowatt hour uh, battery, fast charging. And what they're really proud of is like how luxurious the, the back seats are, or the second row seats. And if you sort of look, even in this picture, you can sort of tell, it's almost like you get the same experience in the second row as you do the first row per, for the most part. So. And there's a third row and it's super luxurious. And like, if you're driving your kids to school, you don't even have to get out of the car. There's like a door open thing and your your kid of yeah, a certain age can hop out. Power open doors. It's, yeah, lots of luxury. It's super nice. It's pricey, but you know, Escalades are pricey. <laughs> Next up, BMW. We have the ultimate driving machine. So this is the uh, BMW i4. And uh, I just uh, have, I, like I've sat in these, There's, they feel tight and compact. Um, so if you're looking for something bigger, that can be, not be the thing, but if you're looking for an ultimate driving machine, this thing is just so nice. And we recently did a video with Eric from uh, Monroe Podcast. Yes. And he listed this as his favorite car to drive. Yeah, and I mean, it. I don't <laughs> we know need to drive with it. the reflection if we can see inside, but um, it's just like BMW inside, it fits you like a glove. It's the ultimate driving machine, you know. And somewhat of a similar interior to the Blazer, actually, but the brown 
like reddy brown um, bricky i kind of like this a little bit i muted. like this yeah um and uh, you know if you're if you want a sporty sedan this is you know hard to beat no they're all locked don't even try <laughs> <laughs> And next up, uh, Lucid. It's really cool to see Lucid here. This is yeah. the first auto show where Lucid has uh, been. And um, they only have the air. The gravity is not here, unfortunately. But you can go do, you know, again, test rides. And if you don't know, the gravity was their SUV that was unveiled at the LA Auto Show. So it's like, um, they call it more reasonably priced. So it's an $80,000 starting price. Starting price. Starting price. Um, <laughs> And the uh, Lucid Air varies greatly. So they start, I believe, like at 77,000, but you can go all the way up to like 160,000 and then they have the Lucid Sa Sapphire. So uh, with the Lucid Sapphire, that's even pricier, but that's for like, if you want ultimate, ultimate performance. Um, and with the Lucid Air, the big thing is, is like they're very efficient, very good range on all the models. Let's see if they have the, the stats up here. So uh, up to 500 miles of range, uh, 200 miles charge. of range, charging in 12 minutes, up to 1,200 horsepower, uh, zero to 60 in 1.89 seconds. That's insane. I think we had a reflection, so you probably didn't get to see any of nope. that. Nope, <laughs> but that is crazy. That's more than anyone needs, I think. Now, this was surprising. Tesla is here. We were not expecting this. <laughs> no, this is the first auto show that we've seen Tesla as well. Um, and one of the stars that people are ignoring here though this is the refreshed model three so uh, you may have seen like for like you know in california we see tons of model threes and tons of model y's but th I, this is the first time i've seen the refreshed model three and that in means person. in person yeah. so they've updated the the headlights as you can see um so a little bit um like the the, the new Roadster look a little bit, if you, you know, depending on how you look at it. And then uh, there's some changes in the interior, not many, but it has uh, some ambient lighting and they've added the rear screen as well. So the rear pa uh, passengers uh, get a screen and then the uh, rear tail lights are, are changed. Cause it used to be like it would follow uh, this line up. So the, the tail light was divided into two parts. Now it's one part. So when it opens up, the tail light goes up with it. Um, just a slightly refreshed look and uh, supposedly a bit better arrow. So it actually gets uh, a little bit more range, but okay, let's go ahead and spin around. There was a surprise. We weren't expecting to see this either. So the Cybertruck is here. Uh, what do you guys think of it? You'll have to let us know. Everyone is sharing their thoughts. This is obviously a controversial and interesting new vehicle. Um, I'm, it's scratchy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be careful. Don't, don't cut yourself there. are there. parts. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an interesting vehicle for sure. Uh, Super interesting. Definitely looks like a Mars rover. <laughs> it has had a lot, a lot of coverage. So we won't get into it too much. Um, yeah. Just know that like right now, uh, I believe the only specs that you can really get are like the, the uh, eighty thousand dollar when um, and they're all like the foundation series. This one is a foundation series, but I don't think it has all of the foundation series markings on it. We saw one in the back, but I don't see the one that's up here. And I kind of want to. Um, I don't remember where the button was. Uh, push straight back. Push straight back. That's a weird feeling. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. Um, doesn't it say Foundation Series somewhere in here? I don't know. Okay, I, but it does say Cybertruck uh, on the back there. I do kind of like the logo. And on the door trims, if we actually manage to have any sort of coherent filming, then we will have a dedicated video on this. Um, the close the front button is lit, which is cool. And then uh, if you watch Kyle Connor's video, it will um, munch a carrot. It'll, it'll <laughs> crunch a carrot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it it's just exciting to, to actually see it in person and uh hey what do you guys think um we won't go into the specs of this there's just too many things uh to talk about with the cyber truck let's but. give the rear view as well just so everyone can okay. see it quick because it's um angular it's very <laughs> angular it's very angular um wouldn't it be cool if they were doing test drives in this so test drives yeah when when i saw the the photo of it i was like it'd be really cool but i don't think they have enough in production right now that's fair and it would be a, a hot commodity just be yeah like, run 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 pretty long <laughs> ride. 
I don't know. It's and, and of course, like we love doing the test rides, but at the same time, it's like we really need to get these out on the street and see how they perform. But it's great to have this here. Um, this is all the whole big deal of why auto shows are so important. It's accessibility for everyone. So um, the Chicago auto show is going to be going until the 19th of February. So we have um, 10 more days, I guess, of this. And you can come see this here. If we get this video out really quickly, then you will know about it. Either way, yeah. maybe it'll come to an auto show near you. Now we're at the Honda booth. If you're interested, we actually will have a video out riding the Moto Compacto. This is a tiny little electric vehicle. It weighs 40 pounds. I'm going to grab it. Everyone here is ready for the ride. Hi, guys. I'm just going to take this and go, right? Okay. <laughs> it's 40 pounds. It's not bad, but you can do your workout with it. Um, oh, kickstand. Oh, there we go. Okay. I didn't break it. <laughs> Onward. We have a four wheel vehicle to look at. That we got to move tunnel. our way through. <laughs> Um, I, I just want to com comment on the Moto Compacto. It's uh, like 995, has a range of like 12 miles, top speed of like 15. Um, I think what would be sort of cool is like to put it in the back of your EV. So like when you go and charge and you're like, oh, I need to go over to the bathroom or go. Totally. Yeah. So we are walking under a plane right now and Patrick's totally casual, by the way, but I'm standing under a plane. Just here. Yes, she is. Know. This is the auto show. <laughs> All right. So here is the four wheel that you will have your little Moto Compacto stuck in, in Until. what seems to be the closest match to my hair that we've found so far. What's the uh, prologue? Maybe surprising if you haven't been following. This uh, Honda Prologue is actually like the Honda version of the like Blazer. So it's built on the uh, GM Ultium platform and uh, but it's been Hondaized, I guess you, you can say. <laughs> Hondaized? Uh, we, 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 we did film this, yes. We yeah, we did this film this. <laughs> you you um, can see Liv has coffee. We had to stop and get some coffee. It's so necessary. I'm so grateful that they have coffee here. This kind of um, feels similar in a way to the Kona, like this really simplistic light bar headlight and this continual line. Don't you feel like that's kind of similar? I really like well, the simplistic look. The Kona goes all the way across. This is just it does, but this is echoed in the black. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, here, we'll just pivot a little, is what we have discovered is our favorite red. Wait, no, what? we gotta, uh, There's we gotta more? finish this, the prologue. Oh, of uh, course. I just want to mention this. GM does something similar, uh, but they do home charging. So like if you, you know, instead of giving you like free charging, which you actually can do, you can get free charging credits. Uh, they will actually pay to get your home charger installed or give you a credit. So, mm, yeah, nice. so it's, it's, you know, I think that's a, a, a win for everybody. Like if you can mm -hmm. charge at home, that's what makes EVs so uh, affordable or not affordable, convenient. Accessible, Accessible, so, accessible as well. Okay, so Liv is going like, <laughs> to skip to the non We're going to pivot and go to the Mazda, the CX-30. What do you guys think? I think this is a really good red. Patrick and I both looked over and were like, dang. It would, it would look better on an EV. It would definitely, everything looks but better this is, on an yeah, EV. Yeah, this is my favorite red. Uh, I, really I like good. rapid red as well, but I think this is, looks fantastic. And hopefully, like in the camera view, it doesn't look. It never red. looks the same in camera. All right, onwards. Well, and we can just literally turn and pivot because uh, we're here uh, at BMW and uh, starting off this is the i5 and i really 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 like this i just saw it for the first time yesterday um it's a little bit bigger than the i4 that we just saw over there on the uh where did we see that test track test track uh so this starts at like 66 000. a little bit bigger than the or quite a bit bigger than the uh i4 not as big as the i7 which we'll, we'll hit in a second um and uh, what does it say like 335 horsepower 81 kilowatt hour uh, battery. It doesn't say the range on here. I'm sure somebody knows the range if you have that or I'll put it down in the description. I don't know, somebody will comment. <laughs> so uh, Comment, don't make it hard for yourself. They also have the i7 out here. Now this is more of the uh, higher end luxury. Starts at, uh, or this one is 121,000. It's the BMW. Uh, oh, it is not an i7. No, this is not. I was like, wait, oh. did you see a seven? Did you get gas fooled? Yeah. Did you get ice tricked? What are we, I didn't do we even need notice. a term? We probably won't even edit that out. So what is a term when you think that something is EV and it's actually ice? 
Did you get frozen? He, Did you get yeah. gassed? Yeah, I like I, I just like ah, uh, because I I was sort of looking out like what are we going to cover next, and I was like oh that's an I seven, and I turned I'm like it's not an I seven. It's not an I seven. All right, let's go find something that's actually electric. Electric. All right, after Patrick's accidental BMW Whoops. ring, we actually just pivot right here. This is a, like. I, this is not my color, but <laughs> it does look really good. It's like a, a goldish color, but uh, this is a Type S ZDX. Um, basically the Acura version of the Honda Prologue, but this one has all of the performance stuff. Like you can see, like they have the Brembo brakes up front, the, the larger wheels. Um, can we see inside at all? Yeah, it looks very similar inside. Um, to, to the blazer and the, the prologue, if you... And it looks much more yellow or sort of golden on the screen for some reason, but it's kind of orangish. We have to color grade everything to make it yeah. look good. Man, you are making this video really hard for yourself if you yeah, can be color grading too. Uh, and one of the things that we were talking about, I was talking to the Honda rep and he was like, this is to give it a, a sleeker looking design because, you know, black sort of just fades, but they, you, you see that accent. And this is the controversial thing because I think it makes it look like a hearse. And some people say I, that is foolish, but to me, I see hearse when I see this. But You'll have to wait, step to the side of Titch. Let us know what you think. Um, you know, I kind of forgot this was the hearse car um, because I was noticing that the lower trim is that aluminum sheen. It's like the lighter silver, which yeah. is actually really cool. You know, it's oftentimes we're seeing the black trim to make the vehicles look a little slimmer like a corset, but in this case with the light trim, it's actually, it looks cool. However, uh, will it get muddy or dinged up and stuff like that? Yeah. Who knows? All right, onwards. Well, they have a Hummer here, but not only do they have this Hummer, I'm gonna spin around. I'm gonna show you this thing over here. <laughs> Hopefully that was a good pan and we didn't make you guys sick. Wow. But look at this. This is like a camper version of, a, of the Hummer. Um, I forget, Earth. Earth Cruiser is what they're calling it. I had, I didn't know anything about this. Oh, she's gonna like hop in. Oh, cool. Can you see up in there or like? Not I get, right, I mean, it's just like, go have a peek. How cool is this? This is like a land conqueror. <laughs> like, how does it work? Like, I don't like, know. Do you just climb in the back or? Where? It's so big. I don't this know. is really cool. This is functional. Let me go around. How to do the, I get up there? I want to. Um, little info thing so we can get some more info on it. I like there's but, a little lock here. Is that storage? There's a uh, lock on the back of this. Probably so. Like, wow, beautiful. Yeah, let's find out. This is the Earth Cruiser. Earth Cruiser. Carbon fiber Earth Cruiser. I said Land solution. Conqueror. It's Earth Cruiser. You get yeah. that vibe from it. Uh, pop Onboard up roof. solar power, 605 watts. What? Wow. 6,000 watt hours of battery capacity so 605 watts is like two of our solar panels or one and a half um yeah yeah <laughs> pretty um, pretty cool though it's really cool wow and probably very expensive it's not like the hummer for sure <laughs> but like this is a, a literal off-grid um earth cruiser <laughs> wow and i'm missing Good the whole name. top of it there we go dang i do want to figure out how to get in there like where's the ladder does it pop out um, wouldn't it be fun to get in there? You guys have to let us know what you think. Um, I'd be interested to see inside. <laughs> yeah, me too. I want to go do a video inside. <laughs> All right. And now actually we have a wall charger, the pop-up wall charger. Uh, power up. <laughs> power. power. I know. I'm charger. sorry. I'm stuck on pop-up canopy camper. Okay. Let's move onward. We walk back through and it's actually now open. So... I think Liv should get up in it. <laughs> I'm down, let's hop in. <laughs> this is gonna be very inelegant, I think. It's How okay. Oh yeah. Ooh, not too bad. Okay, so then you would like grab the sides of the door and get yourself up in here. Wow, this is so cool. Here, let me bring you guys in to the cooking surface right here. As the camera slowly tilts. Are you coming in, Patrick? There's, no, I'll, I'll there's look down here. An like, induction cooking <laughs> surface right here. There's a little sink. A GFCI um, outlet. GFCI outlet over there. Um, slow panning. Let's look at all the stuff that is in this tiny little space in this um, Hummer pop-up. 
wow, there's a bunch of cool, useful storage. These uh, flap down zips or whatever, super technical terms. So you can see the beautiful outdoors um, and then hop into your bed. This looks really lovely and, and big and comfortable. This is crazy. It looks really awesome. It does. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to hop in. <laughs> uh -oh. I don't know how I'm getting out. <laughs> oh, there. Check it out. Um, I kind of like <clears throat> slipped on the, the pillow here. So I'd be interested to see like what the right way is to do it. How are you doing down there? <laughs> yeah, just I'm worried about you getting down. I'll be all right. So this is the Lexus RZ450E. We actually got to have one for about a week and drove it all around. Drives really nice, feels pretty nice inside. The negatives for me were like it was noisy. There's a lot of beeps and warnings and the range just isn't great. Like uh, 220 miles of range. The one we had only had 196 miles of range. I think that's just too low. Um, also, the one that we had was like a gray and black. There's actually a lot of black cladding and accents on this as well, just like the BZ4X and the Solterra. Um, but with this color, it's actually a like very dark black uh, metallic with all of the the just regular black piano trim. You don't you don't get as much of that like controversial look on this one. Um, but it, it's it's Lexus. So like if you are a Lexus fan and you've been waiting for an EV, this is available. Uh, I wouldn't get it if you are a frequent Lexus road tripper. But if you're, you know, just, you know, need an EV for around town, the occasional trip, it probably will suit your needs if you're a Lexus fan. So and keep that in mind. You said it's uh, the range is too low. We uh, are borrowing Kyle Connors 2012 Nissan Leaf, which has max like 50 miles of range right now. So it's not that the range is too low for us. It's that the range is too low for us for the price. For the price. You can totally be fine with this amount of range for city driving and even road tripping or whatever. It's it's for the price. If the, if that is not a consideration for you, then this is a great vehicle. Because this the, the one that we had was spec'd out. It was around 60, which is about what a Mach-E GT which gives you a lot better performance and uh, about 60 miles more of range. So, But if performance and range isn't important to you, then this is a great vehicle. It, yeah, <laughs> like one of our favorite features and the only car that we've been in that had this, uh, had the electrochromatic roof, I think that's what we called it. Yeah. Uh, so you, with a touch of the button, your glass roof uh, changes to opaque. I think it's actually called photochromic. Photochromic? I can't uh, remember. You guys Someone remember, correct us down below, comment. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's really fun. It looks like frosted glass and everything. All right, onwards. Now we're at Kia. Uh, these are actually open, so we can sort of stick the camera in. But here's the EV9. I love this like light through the front uh, grill area. Uh, it looks really, really cool. Such a great effect because it's sort of just is so smooth and like you could just, you know, if you had to wash it, you don't have to, I don't know, it's just neat. I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it's completely easy to clean, I assume, but it looks really cool and complex. And this is what I was talking about. So like the EV9 being such a great price because like the, uh, it, it starts at 55,000. I'm going to move because they're being Super really noisy. Super very over loud. There. <laughs> uh, the EV9 Lite, standard range, rear wheel drive, starts at 55,000. The GT line, which that's what this one is, is like 74,000. So uh, let's just go over on this but side. But 54,000 for this body style for a family of seven? Yeah. That's crazy. I, that's not crazy. That's expensive, but it's like this is finally becoming something that exists and is becoming more accessible. Three-row three SUV. And I believe, though, like if you... Uh, we'll, we'll go do this EV6 where it's quieter. <laughs> um, if you, you know, God, and then there's noise over here. <laughs> but they, uh, This is fun stuff, though, that you can do. So it's, it's cool, playful exhibit. But the Model X, um, I believe you can get those for like 79000 So at the top line of the EV9, it starts to compete with the uh, like Model X. And it's kind of cool because there's an EV9 uh, showing through this demo here, this display. So you can see that there. And then, of course, we have the EV6. And this is the GT that I was referring to earlier that I really, really like. The range is a little bit low, but I can tell you about the prices. So, yeah, it starts similar to the Mach-E, uh, $42,600, all the way up to the GT line, like this one is $61,000. Um, 
a little bit lower range, but it's actually better performance than the Mach-E GT. So, you know, depending on what you're looking for, um, I think for us, I love this. I can see buying this. I love the, the, the neon green accents, uh, but the range would be something that would make me weary of, of buying this. It does charge really fast as well, 10 to 80% in about 18 minutes under perfect conditions. That's always the caveat with any of the charging things. Uh, you have to have a like a 350 kilowatt EA charger to get that it has to be functional. The battery has to be uh, preconditioned and, and ready to go or at least warm. So, uh, you know, all of those things go into consideration. I know somebody, they actually just uh, messaged me because they have an EV6. They wanted a Mach-E, but they bought this for the, the faster charging. And they're like, I can never get the faster charging, so I'm gonna trade in my EV6 and go back to a Mach-E. Um, and it, you know, it's still just down to personal preference of like what, what you like and what you wanna drive, what it looks like. We sort of forget, like it's not always about specs. I just realized they also have a, a Kia Nero Oh, of course. But I think that's a gas one. I don't know if they have it. But you can Nero. get the Kia Nero in gas, uh, hybrid, and EV, so we can show the body type at least. Uh, are you searching for Neros? Yeah, I'm just going to, I mean, you can see what it looks like. We don't need to. It's really loud over there, uh, but these are all the Kia offerings. Super cool and great that they have it on the test track, too. Yeah. Oh, hi, <laughs> we're not cold. We're just at the Subaru booth. This is what they do every time. They have some kind of cool camping setup. We are gonna pivot and look at the Subaru Solterra, which is looking super natural in their campy, foresty setup. Sometime we've even seen it snow at a Subaru booth. So it's always fun. Well, and obviously- Not easy, um, but there's snow on that one over there. <laughs> there's snow on that one. Um, the Subaru Solterra, like Patrick said earlier, is uh, on the same platform or the same vehicle, basically, as a uh, Toyota BZ4X. And it has a whole bunch of um, lift, ground clearance, like eight inches, right? Yeah, this is, yeah, if you need ground clearance, this is uh, the vehicle for you. Um, same limitations as like the BZ4X and the Lexus RZ450E as far as charging is not great, uh, range is not spectacular, but it's still, you know, a couple hundred miles of range, if that's all you need, this is a, 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 a and you need ground clearance, this is a great choice. It's super great, and it's kind of cool to see this in this color because obviously we saw the BZ4X uh, in the full black. So here we have the, the black cladding here. The difference between the Solterra and the BZ4X is that this is matte, and uh, the BZ4X is glossy, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. And then there's, there's some, you know, other two-tone stuff up here, like even in the hood. Interesting stuff. Um, and then in the front, you have like the, the grill areas outlined in black as well. But this car gets a really bad rap. Uh, a lot of people don't love the range necessarily. Depending on what you've heard, you might not have heard the best stuff. But the Solterra that we borrowed, it was a, a, someone's own Solterra, and she loves it. She drives it around in Albany where it's super cold and has a great time with it because she's not really road tripping it that much. So range and performance doesn't necessarily matter if it doesn't matter to you and that's okay do they have the pricing of this because i think that's the other thing is is like i don't the, see it the, the issue is like for about the same price you can find some other options like the id4 or whatever but but the id4 is players. lower yeah, yeah so i don't know it's and if you're a subaru fan a lot of people are you know do have brand loyalty so you know it's hard to knock that um, if you if you like Subaru, this is a Subaru. So and even by the way, it looks like a Toyota. It's a cute little plate. Kindness is free. That's true. Yeah, all right. That is true. The car is expensive. Kindness is free. How's that? <laughs> and we're almost done, but I think we got a couple more. Let's go look. Let's go. All right. We found the most expensive EV here at the LA uh, LA Chicago Auto Show. Five hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. It is a 102 kilowatt hour battery, 266 miles of range, 577 horsepower, uh, top speed of 155, zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. This is the Rolls Royce Spectre. Kyle Connor did a uh, fun video. Uh, Scotty Reese from uh, Girl's Guide to Cars was also in it. They did like one of the coolest things that I've ever seen any reviewer do in an EV, especially an expensive one. They went to Bojangles. <laughs> If you guys know Bojangles, I'm from the South. We don't have Bojangles out in California or Colorado where we live, but I grew up on Bojangles and Bojangles biscuits. We're totally off of EVs, but if you like Bojangles, let me know, because I'm like a big fan. 
Uh, but anyways, super cool. It has like the uh, suicide doors, as they call them. Uh, it has like a star light uh, ceiling. Um, but it's just, it's just. What makes it worth excess. half a million dollars? Very solidly built. Mm -hmm. Very premium materials. It's sort of like, uh, you know, you can get a leather jacket and then you can get a premium leather jacket. Everything in here is premium. Uh, I know that the interior is super quiet. Uh, Kyle and Francie, I think, were filming and they were literally going 70 miles an hour and whispering to each other. And it was fine, which is just insane how quiet it is. But I'm going to assume... None of our viewers have won the lottery yet. So this is outside of your budget. Uh, I mean, maybe this is inside people's budget, but I would by the way, probably buy a house first. I'll have to say, just going to throw it out there. If you are considering this, would you also consider being a Patreon? <laughs> we have a $2, $4, and $6 a month level. You can find the details down below. But if you're considering this, just FYI, you can up your, your pledge amount to like a hundred bucks a month. We want Whoa, mine. going hard. <laughs> or a thousand um, a month. You know? Oh my <laughs> Or a Spectre a month. Or you could also join us on YouTube. You get fun little things oh, like yeah. custom emojis. I drew fancy pony emojis and GT logos and all that stuff. Uh, and potentially uh, private videos as well. We have, I think, maybe one more EV to find. Let's go find it. Let's go. We are now with the final EVs that we're going to show you at the Chicago Auto Show. But I think these are actually the coolest. This is all with uh, RDJ Dream Cars sweepstakes. You can go to uh, rdjdreamcars.com and enter the sweepstakes yourself. Uh, it's Robert Downey Jr. He's taking taken some of these classic vehicles and converted them to like eco-friendly uh, options. So these up here are EVs. Uh, I think the one at the back is running on biodiesel. So there are some you know other alternatives other than EVs, but we'll focus on the EVs just because they're so cool. So this is a 72 VW bus that's been converted. It, um, it has, I believe they said five like Tesla batteries in here. So like you could run everything for like weeks if you actually took it out camping. There's an electric grill in here, uh, which I think is really cool. Like we, we saw the ID buzz when they debuted that uh, in Huntington Beach and they had an electric ID buzz and they're like, look at the grill that we have. And it was a propane grill, which is sort of, you know, if you want to go EV, get an electric grill as well. And then, of course, here we can actually see inside of this one uh, the conversion that they've done here. They've replaced the big V8 that would normally be in the, the Corvette. This is a 65 Corvette, if you didn't know. They converted this as well, and it just looks so good. And the colors, it's an interesting color combo, you know, like the on the bus and as well as this and they were just telling us like some of what they're doing is like the paint and everything like that they're trying to make it so that the paint is eco paint it also uh helps so that the car doesn't get too hot so your components but as well as like when you're in the the like sedans back there or whatever uh you don't have to use air conditioning as much because you're keeping the car cooler so even little details like that the final electric that we're going to talk oh, but about. But wait, you have to point out the mushroom interior and the recycled plastic flooring. Yeah, okay. Really I, cool. You got those details. I, I, I did. didn't hear that as much. I think this looks really beautiful. All right, now let's yeah. pan over here. So that was it as well. I mean, it cost a ton of money to do these conversions and to this level, but it's really cool to see it being done just to show like what you can do with these old classic cars and keep them on the road because otherwise yes you can keep like a, a 65 corvette or the 72 chevy pickup on the road but it's a lot of maintenance to keep those old cars on the road convert it to ev you're good to go and you're doing well for the environment and so. this has so much character yeah it does like i i i know it'd be a ton of money i couldn't afford to do this this is why it's so great they're doing the sweepstakes now uh believe it's running until june this one is actually going to be awarded during the Chicago Auto Show. Hopefully we get this video out quick enough so that you can go online if you are interested in this one. And if you win it and you're watching this, please let us know. We would love to do a feature yes. on you too. If any of you win any of these vehicles, <laughs> let us know. We'll fly to wherever you're at and we'll film a we'll video cover on it. For sure. If you let us. And I mean, get you champagne because this is awesome. Or non-alcoholic. <laughs> so that, like, I was really glad. Uh, what I saw that they were going to be here because I've been wanting to see these vehicles. There's a show on HBO Max as well. So if you want to check that out, just Google it, go to the website, 
all the details will be there. I'm probably forgetting like half of this stuff, but uh, go check it out. And I think that's about the end of our tour. So we'll wrap it up. Welcome to Powering Chicago. Come on up. We're interrupting our tour of EVs because we're going to talk about something super, super important. So come on in. So first of all, we're here with Powering Chicago. Go ahead and introduce yourself for everybody. Hi, uh, my name is Gene Kent. I'm the training director at IBW Local 134's apprenticeship program. That's awesome. So the reason that we wanted to stop by here is it's super important. If you are considering an EV or if you have an EV, you got to charge it. You want to be able to charge it at home. If you can charge it at home, you want to do it right. And that's what you guys are all about. And you have a booth here at the Chicago Auto Show so people could stop by and talk uh, not only about getting one in charge, but also about apprenticeships programs if people want to get into this. Yeah, absolutely. The reason that we're here, um, Powering Chicago, uh, kind of an, uh, an anomaly here at the auto show, but we wanted to, in, in light of all of the EV uh, increase in the auto show for three years now we've been here, uh, we wanted to be a part of the understanding of the infrastructure that goes in uh, in order to get uh, the community, you know, the public to, you know, move towards more of an electrified uh, driving force. So that's why we're here uh, at the auto show, so that people understand what a quality installation looks like for them at their residence, and more importantly, what the community installations look like uh, on a bigger, uh, more fast charger base, uh, and what the auto dealers need for when they're considering maintenance of these vehicles for years to come. It was really great. We've been having a conversation. There's so much to cover and it's not just about, you know, getting an EV charger installed. Uh, it's the whole gamut of, of stuff. So they can talk to you about whether it's heat pumps or uh, mm -hmm. solar installs, you know, they have the knowledge on a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But we do want to emphasize the main key things of like, if you are doing an EV, uh, EVSE, EV charger install, if you need the circuit, number one starting point, a certified electrician, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most importantly, especially for a residence uh, in, in a commercial or industrial application, you want to find an electrician or electrical contractor that is certified or qualified to do this type of installation. Um, most people think it's just plugging an outlet in. That's not the case when we're talking about an EV car. Um, most of them at the low end are pulling, you know, 30 amps at the low end, some upwards on a residential side, 50 to 60 amps. Uh, that is a lot of amperage and can be a dangerous situation if not done correctly. Yeah, we, we've done a lot of EV charger reviews and you guys know that we keep recommending the whole point is to be safe. You have an expensive car, you have an expensive home. You want to make sure that you're going to be safe when you're doing this day after day, week after week. So if you're coming to the Chicago Auto Show, check them out. Uh, but we also talked about there are other uh, I IBW is doing this throughout the nation, but not every location yet, but there's a national uh, mm -hmm. effort as well. So it can be in other areas. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, an easy uh, answer to the question of who is a qualified electrician, uh, look for your IBEW uh, locals around you, look for IBEW signatory contractors, look for IBEW members. Uh, every IBEW electrician out there across the country uh, is a qualified you know, installer of EV charging, uh, EV infrastructure, or any electrical installation for that matter. And they're constantly getting new training, getting mm -hmm. updates. They're, they have a community to share information. So as we get, you know, vehicle to load, all these other type of things, they're going to be your experts. So just stick with that. Um, you know, as I said, you don't want your cousin's brother's uncle's grandnephew to do your install unless they're a member. <laughs> Unless they're a member, absolutely. Uh, or, you know, you can make two phone calls, one to them and then one to us later when things don't go right and something unfortunate. Hopefully nobody gets hurt yeah. in that situation, but... That's what I said. You just want to avoid that 911 call. Yes, absolutely. Right. We don't want the fire department to show up. All right. Well, thank you so much. Check them out if you're coming to the Chicago Auto Show. Well, that is it. That is our time at the Chicago Auto Show. We actually came back to the Powering Chicago booth a little later at the Charity Gala. Thank you, Nissan. And this was pretty much the most happening spot to be in the whole show. And thank you to our Patreon members, the Whisper, Engage, and Unbridled members. Thank you so much. And down below in the comments, let us know which cars are your favorite. Keep an eye out for a dedicated video on each or many of the vehicles that will be coming from the Chicago Auto Show. And just remember that whatever you drive, whether it was at the Auto Show or not, 
enjoy the ride. Bye.